Hi, today I'm going to talk about engraving acrylic dice on a diode laser cutter. And I'm using a variety of different colors of acrylic so you can see how well the different colors work. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And several years ago, I did a video about engraving dice on a laser cutter. And at that time, I was using a CO2 laser cutter. And I'll put the link to that video here because the process I'm going to show you today is very similar to the, what I used in that video with some changes, which I will explain to you now. Um, that was a CO2 laser cutter. Now I'm doing this on a WeCreate Vision diode laser cutter. And that presented two new challenges. One is I didn't know what types of acrylic dice I could use because the blue diode laser has limitations on what colors of acrylic it can cut and engrave. The good news though about my process is, is that I always mask the dice first and I use removable paper stickers to do that. And that's because you need to paint the engraving after you do the engraving. And it's much easier to paint it if you've engraved through paper and then you can just put the paint on and peel it off and, and the paint job is perfect. So I was using masking just because it was dice. That's the process I used in my prior video. And because it's masked, it means that a lot of the issues about the, the blue diode laser and what it can cut and engrave in acrylic goes away. Because uh, I, had, I had read that you could not cut or engrave white, blue, or clear acrylic. And I used white and blue, solid blue, and even translucent blue. The only thing I learned uh, that I had to treat differently is that the transparent or translucent blue here uh, needs higher power settings to get a deeper, deep enough engraving for painting. So I'll show you the process I used uh, to do this. My other challenge though was that the, the Vision is a completely automatic focus system. You can't even manually position the head to do the focus. And you have to focus multiple times in this process because in every case I cut a jig of wood inside the machine, I place the dice in the jig and then I engrave the dice. The focus for the wood is different than the focus of the, the, the die, which is obviously taller. So you have to focus twice on the same without moving the drawing. And my prior approach had me working with six, an array of six individual dice spaced out about an inch apart e each. That was not a big enough target, in my opinion, to work with the Vision's focus system. So what I did is I changed it up and did a block, a three by three block of dice, which fit into a jig this size. And I worked with them as a unit. I would uh, put the nine dice in here, uh, outside of the machine, put a two by two inch sticker on the top, and um, and that was easily a big enough uh, target for the vision to accurately work with on autofocus. So it all worked for me. And so you'll see that process here today. I'll show you doing a drawing in Adobe Illustrator, um, using that drawing to, to do the multiple steps, cutting the jig, um, engraving the dice. There's a final step where the two by two um, uh, sticker is cut into the nine individual dice so that they can be separated and you can move on to the second side. So I'll show you all that process today in this episode. Let's start with the design. I have two references here on this layer. One is a 16 millimeter square, which is the size of one of the dice. And this sword, which is the image I'll use for this test. I created the sword by finding a piece of black and white clip art. And of course, when I pull it into the drawing, I place it into the Illustrator drawing. It's very large, so I have to size it down to something at least a, close to the size I plan on working with. Then once I have that, I'm going to do an image trace. With the sword selected, I have to 
do some settings in this window. I'm going to open the advanced part of the tab and turn on preview so I can see changes as they happen. Then I say ignore white so I don't get duplicate lines for everything. And then I want to see both the image and the outline. It looks right, so then I say expand. So by default, Illustrator is going to set the fill to black and have no outline, but you have the ability to go in and change that. So if I change the outline to my vector engraving blue and turned off the fill, I could do a vector engraving. But I've learned from trying that I can't do both on the same layer. If I want to do both an outline and a fill, I need to make two separate layers for that. I'm going to start with just doing the black fill. And I make the sword small enough to fit easily on the side of the die. The next layer I do is the jig. This has got a 3x3 three three of the dice, so it's 48 millimeters by 48 millimeters square. This next layer has the nine dice, so it shows how they actually do fit into the jig. I only use this layer for my layout. I don't actually export it in the drawing. So now this is the one sword layer of engraving, and I just cut and paste the sword three into a row and then three rows into the full cube. And then the last layer are the lines and the outside square to cut the paper. If I were exporting this to save it, I would have turned off that green layer and then say export as an SVG. That would be my one sword drawing. To do the next side with two swords, I just lay that out, cut and paste it into place, and then I make sure that only what I want in the drawing is turned on, and I say export as an SVG, and I name that two swords. To create my little standalone jig that I use outside of the machine, I just did this little drawing inside the Make It software, and it just has the 48 millimeter square with a border. Here it's in use. I just put the dice inside of it. And now I need to mask them. So these are the only removable labels I could find. They're two by four, so I cut them in half to a two by two square. That excess will get cut off in the final step. When I move this back and forth, I always use kind of a claw motion with my hands and support the dice on all four sides. I ended up having to run this several times to get the right settings. The video I'm going to show of inside the Make It software is going to be for the last run. I just want to show you the process I went through each time. I've already uploaded my SVG and saved it as a Make It file. Now I can just open it. I hit the refresh button and you can see my Swiss cheese board I've been working on here. I move my drawing over to a clean spot to work. Let's look at my three different color layers, the black engraving, the blue paper cutting, and the red jig cutting. I want to turn the engraving off for the first pass, so I say ignore for processing. I want to turn off the paper cutting. I pick the blue and say ignore for processing and I leave the red on. Then I tell it to autofocus, and it'll do that, and when it's finished, I can say start. It gives me a time estimate of a minute, which is very accurate, and then it says push this button on the machine. So I do that, and I'm gonna let this run real time. The first time is gonna be real time, and this is the full sound. I haven't muted the sound. So what it's doing, first is to cut the jig. The jig's job is to make sure that I get the dice in exactly the right place I want it, so that later when I do the next two steps, everything is aligned properly. It also keeps the dice from moving during the process. I use a little wad of masking tape to carefully remove that piece of wood, and I carefully place the dice in. I have a piece of hard wasteboard under my board I'm cutting so that the dice will not fall through. For the next step, I'm going to turn off the jig layer by saying ignore for processing, and I have to turn back on the black and the blue layers because that's what I want to happen in this next step. Be careful not to move the drawing, just like you're careful to not move the board. 
Now you click refresh again and you get an updated view of the inside the machine and you'll see the white sticker now and it looks like it's not aligned but do not fear that's a perspective issue. Everything is still in alignment if you haven't changed anything. So run the autofocus again, look inside, make sure that the red dot is actually touching the white paper. Then you can say start and it says a minute 24. It's going to take about twice that long to actually do the next step. So here is the first engraving. This is also at real time. I could tell before I even pulled this out of the machine that it wasn't nearly high enough power settings and slow enough speeds. So I recalculated and started over. So here's my next attempt. And all of these uh, from here forward are going to be sped up. I'm already getting concerned that the size of the sword I've made too small. It's actually a two-piece sword as well, which is totally unnecessary for a project like this. So I probably am going to end up needing to redo the image itself. I'm also trying to get the settings right for this step, the cutting of the paper, and that was pretty close. I mean, I could pull those apart if I wanted to. And these settings engrave through the paper quite well, but when I remove the sticker, you see that only three of the dice have actually engraved. So I did another iteration. Now, obviously, I roll the dice each time I do this, so I'm working on a new side. And this is better, but it's still the blues and the white, no surprise, are the most challenged. So let's look at the actual settings here of the final run. The jig is at 100% power, seven millimeters a second. The dice fill engraving is 75% power, 80 millimeters per second, line density 100. And the paper cut is 85% power, 76 millimeters per second. And all of these were only one pass. The sticker cutting is perfect. It cuts the sticker, but doesn't touch the dice. The engraving seems to be good, but the real test is to segregate them into dark and light and to paint them. I'm going to use black and white base coats from my Citadel paints. And this is how you paint them. I mean, you don't have to be super careful, but you should remove the sticker before the paint is dry. This is the final result. And first of all, the blue transparent was clearly an issue. It wasn't a deep enough engraving. And when I removed the sticker, it removed some of the paint. So that might work, but it has to have higher settings. As for the rest, it's worked, but I'm not really thrilled with the final result. So I went back to two swords and I added an outline in the drawing in addition to the fill and grave. And all it did was degrade the quality of the masking. So adding an outline was not the solution. I pulled out the dice from my prior video and here's the comparison side by side. And the real issue is this sword is just too small, too intricate. I feel confident the diode laser could match the quality in all of the solid color dice. I would probably avoid using the transparent blue. The good news is you can definitely engrave acrylic dice on a diode laser as long as you mask it before you engrave. If this has been helpful for you, please subscribe to my channel, put a like on the video, and share the video with your friends.